So what happened was Seth Rollins did this angle with Finn Balor. They had a big brawl. Seth stomped him, laid him out. Seth starts heading to the back, and this bloke jumped the rail, and he just started sprinting. And he hit Seth, just ran him over. Seth grabs him in a front face lock on the ground. The dude pops his head out, starts pulling on Seth's hair. Seth slips out between his legs. Bunch of, like the WWE officials ran down to break it up. I don't even know where security was for a while. But luckily, the, the uh, you know, the normal backstage geeks that break up fake fights, they were there to break up the real fight. The announcers, you, you actually see on television uh, this fan run him over, and the announcers start freaking out about it, and then they're immediately told to shut up. And they cut away, and the announcers start talking about, I sure hope Finn Balor's all right. And then they, they cut back to Seth Rollins on the, on the stage, and he's got blood coming out of his mouth. He goes, is that all you got? And blows a kiss to Finn Balor, and then he walks away. So that's what happened. And obviously this, this bloke is going to be charged, and hopefully they throw the book at the guy. I saw a lot of really stupid stuff on the Internet last night, including by, of all people, Chavo Guerrero Jr., who tweeted something like, Remember when the wrestlers were tougher than the fans? Literally, you can't write anything dumber than that. I mean, I saw a lot of dumb things written by fans, but you know how fans are. Everybody's a tough guy when they watch the thing happen on, on television. But I mean, Chavo Guerrero, he should know better than to write something that stupid. Saw people talking about how, how Seth looked weak and blah, blah, blah. Let me explain something all you... I hate to use this term, but some of you deserve it today. Bunch of keyboard warriors. Oh. First off, have you ever seen a real fight in, like, UFC? And you have these two guys, and they stand in front of each other, and they bite down on their mouthpiece, and they just start, th they just start throwing hands. And they're punching each other right in the face from, like, right here, and nobody goes down. You've all seen that. You ever seen the, the UFC fight where the dude maybe he does a spin or whatever and he gets clipped, he didn't know it was coming, and he's out? Well, I don't know if you know this or not, but these wrestlers, they take a lot of big bumps. They take giant superplexes. They got dropped on their heads or whatever. You can get rear-ended by somebody going 10 miles an hour and you're messed up for years because there's a difference between expecting something and being blindsided by it. This bloke blindsided Seth. I mean, he flew in out of nowhere and did like a, a pounce, and Seth goes flying. Dude, Seth could have been very seriously injured by this, but he wasn't. What's the first thing he does? He grabs a, a basically an arm in guillotine on the ground. Seth is not a trained MMA fighter. No one who is not a trained fighter, trained in jiu-jitsu or whatever, you're not going to choke a guy out with an arm in guillotine. But he held the guy, and if he'd put his legs around him, if he'd put him in the guard, he probably would have held him there until all those blokes came out. But he just grabbed his head, and so this giant dude stands up and his head pops out. He grabs Seth by the hair. Seth was was in control of the situation. He got out. All the geeks came by and and took care of this dude, and Seth was right back in character. Seth did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong in this situation. Now, that's my opinion. As a certified first-degree black belt in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu under Pedro Sauer. But you know who's not any of those things? Vince McMahon. Now, there's a chance that Vince is going to look at this footage and go, Oh, I, this guy was on the bottom the whole time. Should have taken his fan out. He should have just punched him in the face. Because, you know, Vince is a street fighter. I would have just punched him in the face. Would have knocked him out with one shot. What's he grabbing his head for? You guys know how Vince is. I, I hope that this does not end up with, like, subconscious ramifications with Vince where now I can't push this guy as a champ because his fan was on top of him. But, you know, Vince is out of his mind. Fancies himself a big, tough street fighter. So hopefully this is not the end result of all of this. But uh, if you're one of these nerds on the Internet that's watching this going, Ah, oh, Seth is so weak. Ah, oh, Seth looked horrible. I got, I got three words for you. Get a life! I hate seeing this stupid stuff on the Internet. Everyone's a tough guy on the Internet till they get blindsided by this giant dude in the middle of a show on the ramp. Oh. Everybody's you know what I would have done? I would have done this. Ah, oh, yeah. Seth! 
Everybody talks Get about that here. for everything, you know, no matter what it is, let alone something like this when it happens. And what you didn't really sell was the fact that this guy had a running start. You said it was like a pounce. This guy had That's a what I said. He run. went running and pounced this guy. I say, for those who didn't see it, I mean, like, out of the wings, and Seth was looking the other way and got hit. This was not like he was walking, and this guy was straight up and challenged him and then took him down. The guy was a lot bigger than Seth, came out of nowhere, barreled him over. Like you mentioned, Seth was in control of the situation. Actually got a couple of kicks to the guy's head when he was on the ground, uh, when security was, you know, getting the guy off of him. It, it I, you know, what, what, there's nothing, Seth did, was not weak, didn't look weak. That's just silly. Now, security looked weak. That was absolutely an embarrassment. And for a, you know, it's not like they haven't had an issue with security at Barclays before, the Bret Hart one being the most glaring example of something that has happened there. But everybody was at a a just look, you, you got to take this situation. And the only thing you can do is find the silver lining in it. And that is make it a positive by hemming up your security, because obviously there was a big gaping hole for this guy to literally hop the rail and run through and do this on national TV. You know, these things can be end up being a lot worse. And I'm not, you know, the the whole deal with how security should treat somebody at this point. You know, WWE is a big corporate place. So this fan getting stomped out, you know, isn't going to happen. You well, know, here's the, the thing, because I've seen a lot of that. OK, the laws in every state are different. This took place at the Barclays Center in New York. OK, if Seth felt that he was in danger in New York State. And I'm not advocating this. I'm just telling you. He could have killed this dude, and he ain't going away, okay? The laws are different in every state, but in New York, there's self-defense laws. If you feel that your life is in danger, I mean, you can use deadly force to protect yourself in New York. So I'm not advocating anything like that, but people are going, oh, if Seth would have choked him out. I'm not talking, and people aren't even talking about killing him. They're like, if he would have just choked him unconscious, like, there'd be a lawsuit, blah, blah, blah. Actually, no, there would. No, I mean, no. the guy could try, but yeah. I mean, uh, this is the New guy York State. Into your realm, you don't know what that man's going to do. He could be doing what he harm has. To you. Could have a knife. Period. Could have a gun. Right. It would be up to the defense to prove that Seth did not believe that his life were in danger. Good luck with that when this guy comes flying in and and tackles you on national television and is all over you. Yeah. I mean, that now, guy me would have a leg to stand on. Me personally, I if the person was drunk, like a drunk functioning adult, well, if you know as much as a drunk can function, they should be stomped out. Like, and that would be Mike's justice. Now, that is not going to happen, but that would be me. Now, there are people with special needs who have like you get over exuberant things happen with people, but like this is like any sporting event or anything. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm for stomping people's faces in. But if it does happen, if you do something like this, uh, my feelings aren't going to be hurt. Again, maybe it's just that as a Canadian who has always had health insurance, this doesn't seem, Max, smart enough, to this, be a big this deal. This is going to go to the best of right here, Lance. Yeah. You're being corralled away by uh, by this dog. By a dog trying to eat my wife's uh, boots. Oh, man. Oh, they said they must be tasty. Yeah, if my wife gets home and her good leather boots are chewed up, I'm dead. You'll be chewed up next. Yeah, I'll be living outside with the dog. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.